Hello everyone, how's it going? Elliot here again. In today's video, we're gonna be doing a refurb on this old IBM ThinkPad 600X. Uh, this thing was released in the sort of mid to late 90s. A very, very nice looking laptop. Um, it's just like sort of modern enough that it, that it can still have a lot of very good function, but it's retro enough that it looks cool. And uh, I love that three by four display. Very, very nice. Um, so I picked this up for like 25 um, pounds and the, the shipping was quite expensive, but um, when I got it, it would it had been packaged in with no bubble wrap and just some cardboard. So it came down in pretty nasty looking condition and uh, a little bit of the um, the piece on the side had cracked and disk drive didn't work, which he didn't mention. Um, it sort of doesn't pop out a lot. So anyway, he gave me a partial refund of 10 pounds after a little bit of persuasion, so that was good. I've actually managed to track down a replacement drive. So we should hopefully uh, be able to just plug that in and get that working. That was three pounds. Um, I managed to find a hard drive because it didn't come with one. Um, I actually picked up a, a laptop not too long ago uh, it's a really, really bad one, but it had a 60, I think, gigabyte IDE hard drive in there. So I just popped that in here and installed Windows 98 with no problems. I picked up this disc for like three or four pounds. Um, it's got a really like bespoke um, graphics chip on here. It's something like a Neo Magic something rather. I don't know what it is. Um, so hopefully they've somehow managed to track down a, a driver disc and put it on here. So um, fingers crossed, but obviously um, we needed these two things to get that working. I haven't tried it yet. It's uh, just come in the post this morning. And I also picked up um, 512 megabytes of RAM. This is a uh, 256 um, cards each, I think. So um, I'm quite excited to just put this all together and see what it looks like. Um, before I go any further though, um, I'm gonna quickly play you the part where I refurbished it because um, when it came down, it was in a nasty, nasty condition. So one of the things I wanna try on this laptop is to clean up the top of it. Um, as you can tell, it is really, really, really scuffed up. There's a big circle in the middle. Um, in all of the corners, there's huge sort of chunks of the, the rubbery finish uh, rubbed off. On the edges, it's all sort of like, it looks like it's almost melting. Um, it's really, really nasty. So it'd be really nice to get this um, into a sort of cleaner looking condition. Now I have done this before on a different IBM. Um, so I know that it can work. This might be a bit too far gone, but I thought it'd be worth a try. And if it doesn't work, I'll probably just sand it all off and um, paint it like a matte black and that'll give it the sort of the matte rubbery look, but it won't be rubbery. So this is a flash magic eraser. Now, obviously this video isn't sponsored by these guys, but these are used very, very often in um, sort of refurbishing and repairs. And it is essentially just a magic eraser. I mean, it does sound a lot more um, sort of cool than it really is. All it really is is basically just a very, 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 very fine grit sort of sanding block. So basically what you've got to do is wet that under the sink. And here's one I wet earlier. And uh, then you just sort of go on the top of the laptop in sort of circles like that. Now, before we do that, what I'm going to do is cover up the IBM ThinkPad logo because obviously that will sand that down as well. There we go. So just turn a little bit of a black tape over the top of that logo. And we just want a little bit on the ThinkPad logo too. Not too much because it's only a small sign. Perfect. Okay. Let's just do it and see what happens. Um, you want to keep a sort of firm grip on it, otherwise it'll just slide around. Oh, and also you don't want to get too much water on the sides or anything, because if it drips down inside, you're going to be on a worse off problem than a, than a slightly scuffed up lid. It doesn't look like it is, but we've got to remember, this is like a, a seriously, seriously damaged lid. So even if we just get a small difference, that would be good, but I'm probably going to have to end up sanding this down and painting it again. Right, let's just give this a quick spray with some surface polish and just see if anything has happened. Oh no. Okay, well that has actually made a very, very big difference. Like that has completely gotten rid of the circle in the middle. The problem is, is it's really got so many scuffs on it that even though it's removed some of them quite lightly, uh, the real like deep ones aren't gonna go anywhere because it's just, yeah, I mean, it's literally sort of moved the rubber completely. So it was worth a try. So the first thing I tried to do was remove the top of the laptop rubber stuff with some isopropyl alcohol. 
Um, obviously this worked on the Gizmondo, which is a console I recently refurbished, but it definitely didn't work on this. The screen was really, really nasty. Uh, the guy who obviously sold it before me had wiped it with something, probably his pair of underwear. I gave the bottom of it a nice clean, removed the battery and gave that a good clean too. Next up, I removed the RAM and Wi-Fi covers. Um, I popped them in a little bowl of isopropyl alcohol and because they're made out of metal, the rubber stuff just peeled off. It was a very, very nice process. I gave the hard drive cover a little bit of a clean with some isopropyl alcohol. Obviously, this is a much smaller piece, so I was able to remove all of the rubber and it's now just the plastic. At last, it was time to take the whole laptop apart. You can see those covers there without the rubber on the top. This is the first time I've taken one of these things apart. It's quite a scary process. There's a lot of stuff and it's a lot more complex than a Game Boy. All the screws on the back are a different size. So if you are gonna do this or to a similar laptop, I'd recommend keeping them um, all in an order that you'll know how to put it back together in. Everything is built very, very well. Uh, the hinges are super, super solid still. Um, no problems at all with them. What I wanted to then do was sand all of the rubber off. Now this took me a good three hours. I was only using wet and dry sandpaper, so that probably wasn't the best idea. I gave the little metal covers a sand as well, and then I took it outside and added a coat of primer. I'm no spray painting expert, but if you just do it in sort of short bursts and start either side of the laptop so you don't get a big sort of blodge in the middle, and then just spray it. And finally, it's time for the finishing touches. I started off by removing all of the residue from the IBM logo and also scraped away some of the paint just to make it stick a little bit better. I then took the IBM logo and put it on the back of some 3N double-sided tape and cut to size. So yeah, as you can see, it turned out looking very, very nice. I'm really, really happy with the, the top of it. Um, honestly, it's come out looking pretty brand new, to be honest. Um, I was really, really happy um, being able to get the ThinkPad logo back in nicely. So um, there's a couple of things we're gonna do. Let's just go ahead and sort the, uh, the RAM and the CD-ROM drive out, and then hopefully, we'll be able to just get this thing going. So upgrading the RAM is very, very simple. Um, I'm just gonna remove this little door here and underneath is the slots for the RAM. And there's also a slot for the BIOS battery, which um, I thought was gonna arrive today, but actually didn't. So not gonna be able to replace that. Uh, the RAM I bought was just some sort of like generic RAM on the eBay listing. I think I paid nine pounds, four pound 50 each or something. Um, and as you can see, they actually say Samsung on them, which is quite nice. Samsung's obviously a, a good brand of RAM to have. Um, so let's go ahead and pop these in. Very, very easy to put RAM in. You sort of push the RAM in diagonally and it clicks clicks in and then you just push it down and then there's sort of some catches on the side uh, and that just sort of, sort of locks it in place. So it's a very, very simple process. Uh, and then obviously just go ahead and stick the um, RAM door back down again. And that is almost us done. So the final thing to do is remove the disk drive bay. Very, very simple. Um, again, you can just take it out and replace it. Um, as you can see, uh, this one is in pretty bad condition. The rubber is all sort of, you know, coming off and sticky and uh, the door itself is actually sort of breaking off as well. Here's the replacement. Hopefully it's even gonna go in, I'm not sure. Let me just uh, 
focus this. I've had to turn my autofocus off because the laptop color just doesn't allow it to uh, focus properly. So we'll push that in and wow, okay, that clicks in very, very nicely. Um, it's also rubber on the bottom of this one, whereas on this one it's the normal sort of plastic. So less of that weird rubber stuff, the better. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn this thing on. It's actually got a, uh, a switch on the side to turn it on, which is quite cool. Um, it's a pretty quiet laptop. If I think if I replace the hard drive to uh, maybe an IDE SSD or something, it could be better. So the first thing it does is tells us that the battery is out of uh, power. Then I need to go through and change the date, but obviously there's no point in doing that because it can't even save the date anyway. Um, so I am just waiting on a battery to come down. They're only a couple of quid, but I don't have any in the moment. Um, I was also able to clean up the little uh, track point nub, which has come out looking rather good. To be fair, these things are surprisingly expensive to replace. So um, it was better for me to just clean it. Okay, there we go. So we're now on the Windows 98 boot sequence. I have got my hopes up quite high that I'm just gonna plug this in and everything's gonna be sorted, but there's obviously a chance that it might not work. Um, another cool thing as well is if you just, um, this little slider down at the bottom can adjust the brightness. It's sort of like a hard brightness thing. So there we go, PCI graphics adapter. Obviously we haven't got that. Um, I did just put a completely vanilla Windows 98 install on here, so it's literally missing everything. It hasn't got anything sort of IBM specific or anything specific for this model. Okay, so I did a little bit of research and the disk full of drivers that I bought uh, doesn't work with Windows 98, so that's that. <laughs> um, really, really annoyed and upset. I didn't read that before ordering them, um, but it's just one of those things, I guess. So. One of these discs, I think I have a bunch of the um, generic sort of good uh, DOS games to try. So let's just give that a try. And okay, the uh, the standard Windows 98 um, desktop isn't quite right. It does actually play games. I did test it. That's another thing we didn't even check. Has the RAM worked? Yes, it has. The RAM has worked. Okay, at least one thing has actually worked. Okay, so let's see how games perform then. It's actually noticeably snappier from when I had um, the 64 megabytes of RAM. So we now have 576 megabytes of RAM in this thing, which is absolutely plenty. So the last thing for us to, of course, do is play a little bit of games. So let's play a little bit of Duke Nukem because that's a game that hopefully everyone will recognize. So the games on this thing run very, very well. Um, they look absolutely brilliantly. Um, there's no sort of like bad graphics or anything. It all runs very, very smoothly. So um, that's one of the benefits of these laptops. You know, you can pick them up for so cheap and the games are free. You can download them online um, or you probably have some copies lying around or you can even go into charity shops. They're literally um, everywhere in charity shops. So. Okay, so this game, by the way, it runs absolutely stunningly. Um, there's just one small problem. It's alt to jump and space to fire. In conjunction with those two, it exits the game. Um, obviously, it's some sort of a shortcut to, en to exit, and I can't work out how to um, change the controls. I'm sure it is probably possible, but for now, it just means that we can only do one thing at a time, which is a little bit annoying. Uh, Okay, yeah, as you can see, I literally can't um, do anything. But yeah, this game is super, super fun and it looks incredible on this laptop. Oh no! Yeah, that's really, really annoying. But yeah, it looks absolutely outstanding on this. Um, okay, that is gonna really, really annoy me. So I really hope you guys have enjoyed this video. It's been really, really fun for me. Um, most of all, I'm so happy with how the, the top of the laptop has turned out. It just looks um, gorgeous and it's a huge, huge improvement over what it looked like when it arrived. Um, the moral of this sort of story is laptops are super cheap to pick up. Uh, there's a lot of fun to be had on them. Uh, you know, don't be fooled by the expensive prices of consoles and games because laptops, uh, you know, you can pick them up from a dump recycle pile um, at, the, at your local dump or a charity shop or whatever, download some games online for free and just explore the fun and probably nostalgia for a lot of you. I really hope you've all enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.